What's up? What's up? What's up, Jet Ski fans? What's up, Jet Ski fans? Welcome to the Joel Larson on YouTube channel. In today's video, I'm going to be installing a stator coil on the Kawasaki 1100 triple that lives inside of my X2. Before I install the stator coil, I am going to be hacking it apart, or what some people might call modifications, in preparations for installing a Zealtronics programmable CDI. Some of you might be wondering why this video isn't the video about the CDI install, and well, I had an interesting week this week. To start with, I've started back to my seasonal job, and I've been quite busy with that, but also, this happened. There's no lights on. Oh, oh, oh. Yeah, I'm still a little sore from that. I will be releasing a video on my Lowered Expectations channel about that incident and about the project that I was working on at that time. If you don't want to miss that, be sure to subscribe to my Lowered Expectations channel, link in the description below. At the end of this video, I will go into a little bit more detail about why I'm doing the modification to this stator coil before installing the Zealtronic CDI. And I will also explain a little bit why buying a Zealtronic CDI might not be as expensive as it might first seem. I apologize for not doing it on camera, but I just removed the bushing from here. This side cover didn't actually have one, so I needed to put a bushing in it. I was quite concerned about how I would get that out. I heated it up with the blowtorch and then I grabbed it with the channel lock pliers, gave it a little bit of a twist and it came right out. So now I'm going to heat up this one. I've got the bushing cooling out, cooling off rather, on a piece of ice. I'm going to warm this up with a torch and then hopefully it slides in. I decided to actually turn the camera on for this because uh, turns out I am a YouTuber and recording stuff is what I do. As I'm doing this, I'm thinking I should probably check to see if the other stuff actually fits here first, but I'm just going to go for it. I don't really know that the, I don't know 100% for sure that the stator coil and the trigger coil will actually bolt up to this. Grab the bushing now, which has been sitting on a block of ice over here. I just just went out in the yard and grabbed a piece of ice, hoping that that just slides in now. Boom, just like that. Here is what they call the stator coil. It actually has a few different coils on it. So the, if I remember correctly, the green and the blue are the trigger coil. And the battery charging coil is the black and the brown. And then the rest of these wires are not needed. So the purple, the yellow, and the red can actually be stripped out of this. I think I will do this with a junk coil first so that I don't ruin my good coil. In fact, I can probably do it with a coil that is no longer good because, <laughs> how do I say this? I can probably do this with a coil that was no longer good, meaning that I probably have a good trigger coil and the charge coils rarely go. So the stator coil, when it goes bad, normally what goes bad is the exciter coil, which is what delivers power to the CDI to create the spark. So I can actually get a bad one of these and use it and it won't be bad. Hopefully this makes sense. What 
you guys probably just witnessed is me hacking a whole bunch of stuff off of this stator coil. This was given to me by the Jet Ski Brothers. It was suspected to be bad. I tested it on my X2 and I had problems with it, so I threw it in a bin to be recycled. However, because I'm running the Zealtronic CDI, I no longer need the exciter coils. All I need is the coils to charge the battery and the trigger coil, which can be changed separately. So I've actually hacked off these three little winding sections and the re remainder of what is on there is just to charge the battery. So I'm now gonna install this into the stator cover and uh, yeah, try to figure out what I'm gonna do about routing all these wires because they're not the same from the ZXI uh, 1100 to a 750. So let's get into it. So the orientation of this coil doesn't matter in the least. All we need to do is make sure that the wires have a fairly direct path so that they don't get snagged on stuff. And I think this probably makes the most sense because the hole that they go out is right there. What's going on here? What's going on here? Is it clocked? Oh yeah, they do have a clock so you can't, you can't put it on wrong, quote unquote wrong. So although it doesn't matter for the operation, it definitely matters for the bolt pattern. So it's gotta go like this. Which is perfectly fine, I guess. It just means that the wires have to be routed slightly different. There we go. Okay, so that means the wires go down behind here so that they don't get caught on the flywheel. And then I'll have to zip tie them to the coils. I got the wires tidied up a little bit. Put a couple of tie wraps on around here to hold them in place. Now they shouldn't get snagged on anything. That fits right like that. And the trigger coil also is about the right length, I believe. Let's get this bolted down and then we'll see. I tried to start one of the bolts, it went with a little bit of difficulty, so instead of chancing ruining something, I'm going to run an M6 tap through first. Okay, I'm glad I did. That shouldn't go that... That shouldn't go that hard. trigger coil is installed. I am going to tighten it up a little bit with this 3 8 drive because I don't want my trigger coil falling off. I also didn't want to use Loctite on it. Okay. All right, there we go. Got our nice little tab, we'll put it on there. Screw this down. And then our wires won't get snagged. There we go. Now all we need to do is install this on the engine. We need to put our spring in and our washer. Install this onto the engine with a little bit of grease in the bushing and then we can do our wiring.
Okay, that did the trick. Now, time to install. Let's pop this on, and then, well, and then we're pretty much done for this video, I think, <laughs> because then we're going to start Zealtronics install. At the first of this video, I told you guys that I would explain a little bit more about why I modified my stator coil, as well as why the Zealtronic CDI might actually be a little bit less expensive to purchase than first expected. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about that right now. First off, what most people refer to as the stator coil is sometimes three coils, sometimes two coils, depending on who you ask. But I'm gonna talk about it as though it is this three, just to explain it in a little bit more detail. So we've got a trigger coil, which bolts on separately. We have a charging coil and an exciter coil that is all in this one assembly. The trigger coil in this case is a blue and green wire, and that is responsible for sending a signal to the CDI to tell the CDI actually when to fire. The charging coil in this case is a brown, two browns and a black wire, and that is responsible for sending power to the voltage regulator which then charges your battery and powers all of your 12 volt electrical system. We then have these nubs here, and those are the exciter coil. Exciter coils? <laughs> anyway, these are responsible for sending power to the CDI that actually produces the spark. So these three humps here produce the power for the spark, and then your trigger coil tells it when to spark. So why does any of this matter and why am I yammering on about it so much? Well, for a couple of reasons. To start with, if you have a bad stator coil, chances are that it is the exciter coil that is bad. That means instead of replacing your stator, you can actually replace your CDI with a Zealtronic CDI, get a cool programmable CDI, and not have to worry about an exciter coil anymore. As long as your charging coil is working properly and you're getting a signal from your trigger coil, then you're good to go. In my case, I cut a bunch of pieces off, which means I have less drag. Even if you aren't using those coils to actually power something, you still get a magnetic drag from the coils that are left in place, and so that's why I cut them off. I'm very happy to say that my carbon fiber bed plate is holding up flawlessly. I was quite honestly worried about it. It is holding a lot of weight and a fair amount of power. And I was concerned also about what the aluminum and salt water would do. But it seems to have held up absolutely perfectly. There is no signs of any damage to it whatsoever. And uh, yeah, I am very pleased with that. I gave it a little clean off and it is good to go once again. One thing that I didn't include in the engine teardown video is that a couple of my mounts are broken. Actually, three of them are broken. The only good one left is in that back corner. So this one ripped completely off. This one is almost ripped off. And this one is almost off as well. So. Luckily, I do have a few spares, so I can get that sorted out. Oh, 
that was actually quite easy. Relatively. All right, bolt holes line up there. Bolt holes kind of line up over here. Let's get her bolted down. All right, guys, I am in serious need of some really good excuses. So please head down to the comment section below and let me know why I can't install the Zealtronic CDI for my next video. <laughs> In all seriousness, I have been quite busy with work and with some other stuff. You know, sometimes life gets in the way of living, but I do hope to have the CDI installed and have a video out for next Sunday on it. Hopefully nothing falls on me and I don't have to make any trips abroad to rescue anyone. I have what I think is a real Joel Arsenault idea, so I'm going to let you guys know what it is and then you can let me know what you think about it down in the comment section below. I'm going to need some sort of an e-box for my electronics because I don't want my Zealtronics flopping around in the breeze. And I do plan on visiting the Jet Ski Brothers at some time in the future. And they've got this nasty stuff down there called salt. So, those of you who follow my channel closely will know what this thing is. It is the metal bracket plate that goes in between my surf braces. And last year I had the coils mounted on the top of it and underneath I had the CDI, and this is the voltage regulator. So what I'm planning on doing is building one of these out of carbon fiber, of course with no holes in it, and then basically taking a junction box and making it so that it can bolt onto the bottom of this. So instead of having a lid for my e-box, this bracket will be the lid for my e-box. Now, I don't know if I've actually shown you guys the Zealtronic CDI, but it is quite tiny compared to the OEM one, so it will give me a lot more room under here. I'm not terribly concerned about the uh, coils themselves, the ignition coils, so I think I will leave them outside still, but uh, I might actually build a separate box for them if I have problems with them. But I think what I'm going to do is just have the voltage regulator, the starter relay and the voltage regulator inside of an e-box that is mounted to a carbon fiber plate that mimics this and mounts in between the surf braces. What do you think? Good idea or bad? I hope you guys enjoyed the video. If you did, be sure to leave a thumbs up on it and also be sure to subscribe. All of that stuff definitely helps and I appreciate it. I am going to try my best not to get started on building that carbon fiber piece that I just talked about. But uh, yeah, be sure to let me know what you think about it down in the comments section below. That is going to do it for this one. Thanks for watching and I will see you next time.